नमस्कार बड़े हर्ष का विषय है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम के अंतर्गत और ही लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी द्वारा सी एस आर मत के अंतर्गत कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया जा रहा है जो कि हम सबके लिए बहुत अच्छा है और इसका जो विषय है वेटरनरी एक्पंचर एवं ट्रेडिशनल चाइनीज वेटरनरी मेडिसिन इस विषय पर थ्री वीक्स का जो ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम किया जा रहा है ये वास्तव में बहुत अच्छा है और पशु चिकित्सकों के लिए देश के उनको तकनीकी विज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाना एवं नई तकनीकी ज्ञान के लिए बहुत आवश्यक है मैं कंपनी के एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा का भी हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूं कि हमारे बीच उन्होंने विश्व के प्रख्यात पशु चिकित्सक डॉक्टर स्टेरिन को आमंत्रित किया है मुख्य वक्ता के रूप में मुझे लगता है कि देश के समस्त पशु चिकित्सक जो भी इस ट्रेनिंग में भाग लेंगे वो इसका लाभ लेंगे आज के वर्तमान समय में ये बहुत बड़ी आवश्यकता है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम हर स्तर पे चलाया जाना चाहिए इसको सरकार की ओर से भी वेटरनरी काउंसिल की ओर से भी हमारे एन भी एसोसिएशन भी सभी लोग अगर इस पर फोकस करते हैं तो आने वाले समय में हम सब मिलके वेटरनरी प्रोफेशन को आगे ले जाने का काम करेंगे और ऐसी हमारी संस्थाएं ऐसी हमारी कंपनियां जो सी एस आर मन में जो काम कर रही हैं वेटनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से हम उनका हार्दिक अभिनंदन करते हैं कि हमारे पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने के लिए एवं नई तकनीक जो भी नई तकनीक आ रही है उनका ज्ञान उनको हो जिससे पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा देश के अंदर वन हेल्थ एक बहुत बड़ा इस वक्त विषय है कि एनिमल हेल्थ ह्यूमन हेल्थ इन्वायरमेंटल हेल्थ सभी की हेल्थ जब ठीक होगी तभी तब जब ही कल हमारा उद्देश्य पूरा होगा इसमें इस प्रकार कंटिन्यूंग वेटरनरी एजुकेशन के प्रोग्राम जो आयोजित किया जा रहा है उससे मुझे लगता है हम जो वन हेल्थ का जो कंसेप्ट है और हमारे पशुपालन में जो दिन प्रतिदिन नई तकनीकी आ रही है उसमें किसानों को पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा और वन हेल्थ का जो हमारा कंसेप्ट है उसको भी हम पूरा करेंगे मुझे लगता है कि मैं पुनः ओरिजिनल लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी को एवं उनके एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा जी को का पुनः अभिनंदन करता हूं वेटरनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से कि आगे भी वो इस प्रकार के कार्यक्रम वेटरनियन के लिए आयोजित करेंगे तो मुझे हम सबको खुशी होगी और हम सब मिलके इस देश के अंदर पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को और उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने का काम करेंगे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद so we will talk more about something that is really useful and i guess something that everybody knows that acupuncture is very useful to treat the ibdd and this is uh, maybe like you will have a lot of patient maybe like the first patient that you will treat so ibdd you know 2% of all dogs can have this issue and in the breed like the dachshund is up to 25% so it's really something that you will see not every day but it's quite a lot of cases in the clinic so here is just uh, to remind you about the normal canine spine so you have the spinal cord and um, just below you have the fibrocartilaginous joint it will allow slight movement of the vertebra it will act as a ligament to all the vertebra together and also act as a shock absorber so in this fibrocartilage you have a nucleus pulpolis in the middle and the annulus fibrolis around so you have two type of ivdd you have the ancient type 1 which is usually more for the dachshund and in this case you have a dorsal extrusion of the degenerate nucleus pulpolis and then you have the type 2 which is the most common one for any kind of uh, breed and in this case you have an hypertrophy of surrounding annulus so the outer part of disc material gradually protrudes so this will cause a progressive compression of the spinal cord so it's also called like a disc protrusion so in tcvm approach an integrative approach the ancient type 1 it's considered to be more like a kidney jing deficiency so in a minute we will see what is jing because it's uh, a new notion for you and the ancient type 2 which is once again the most common type 
this is more considered as a kidney chi deficiency in TCVM. The spinal compression, in any case, it's considered as a stagnation, you remember, so a chi and blood stagnation. I hope you see the same slide. So the jing. So what is the jing? The jing is like the kidney essence. So we can say like uh, we can compare to a candle. You have your candle and uh, you have the wax and you have the flame. At the end of the life, no more wax, the flame stop. And this is death. So when you're born, you have a certain quantity of wax, your kidney essence. It's called like the prenatal gene and it's stored in the kidney, in the TCVM organ kidney. But we still have a postnatal gene. So if you're born with not so many gene, your body can still create more gene and more wax. So your life can be longer. And this it's um, creating from the spleen chi. So you understand that you need like a good quality of life. You need uh, to do some activities, a good level of activities, you need a good diet so your spleen she can create more gene. And this postnatal gene is stored in each organ and then it's coming from your spleen she. So in case of gene deficiency, you have animals that is suffering from uh, some disease in their younger age because the gene is not enough and then they can have like some hip dysplasia, IVDD, because they don't have this uh, kidney essence enough prenatal gene. So you need to nourish the kidney because we say it's the kidney essence in this condition, but you also have to tonify the spleen chi because once again, you have the prenatal gene, but you will create more gene thanks to your spleen. So you really have to tonify this spleen chi. So this was just like a parenthesis about the gene. So the IVDD, you know, like we have uh, some scale, the grades. So we have five grades. The first grade is when we only have pain. So in this case, no problem, like for the dog, no uh, paralysis, nothing, just they feel pain. So in this case, usually they can only have some rest and uh, you can use some Western drug, but you can really use your acupuncture in this patient. In the grade two to three, you can have some paresis issue. So again, you have a lot of Western drug available and you can combine to your acupuncture. And usually with three treatments, they will get better. In the grade four, you have paralysis, but you still have the deep pain. The deep pain is conserved. So this is an emergency. If no better surgery, you can, uh, I mean, if they are not feeling better with the medical treatment, you have to go under surgery okay so after 24 hours of medicine like solimedrol that we can use if they are not getting better then you have to go under surgery and in the last grade the five the grade five you have paralysis but in this case no deep pain this is really the emergency and you have to do the surgery before 24 hours like if you do your emergency no more than 24 hours you will have 50% of improvement. But if you do your surgery after 48 hours, the chance, the recovery chance will be less than 5%. And we will see in a minute that in this case, it's even better not to do the surgery, but to use only acupuncture. So you see like for the chronic IVDD, the just the pain or the paresis, TCVM medicine will be really, really useful for this case. Only the acute IVDD is like a surgical emergency. But once again, 50% success if you do the surgery within the first 24 hours, less than 5% if you do it after 48 hours. So you see really the importance of the, of the time. And you really have also to explain this to your owner, even if they only have a stage two or three, you have to explain like if one day the dog gets paralyzed and without any uh, deep pain, they really have to rush to the, um, to the surgery center. So in this uh, slide, you can see like the relation between the IVDD diagnosis and the prognosis. So you see for the first grade, you remember just some pain. If you just use medicine, you will have 90% of improvement. If you use TCVM only, 
95 to 100%. For the grade two, we go the same, up to 100% improvement with the TCBN. Same with the severe paralysis, like the grade three. For the paralysis, but still we have the deep pain, if they go under surgery, they will be 80% better. If you use only acupuncture, 75 to 90%. So you see, it's really sometimes even better just to go for acupuncture only. The best is if you combine both. But for the grade five, if you do the surgery before 24 hours, or at least before 48 hours, you have 50% chance to be better with the surgery. With the TCVM, 50 to 60%. So you see, it's really like really important. Like you really have a small windows time to do the surgery. In this study, we had 20 paraplegic dogs with preserved deep pain. So they still have the deep pain. So we are we are in the grade four. So we check the recovery time by using like the daily neurological examination, and uh, uh, we had four groups. The first one, we use only the medicine. The second, only electroacupuncture. The third group, we combine both. And the last group has no treatment. So the corticoid, corticosteroid group plus electroacupuncture group, they recover faster than the group without treatment. And the group who receive corticosteroid and electroacupuncture, they recover faster than the other one. So the best for like this case was like to use the medicine combined with the electroacupuncture, and you will get the faster result in this uh, combination. In another studies, because yeah, nowadays there are more and more studies like that can demonstrate the benefit of the acupuncture for IVDD. So in these studies, we have 40 dogs with a mix of grade four and five, and uh, they have like the conventional treatment and uh, they have surgery of their surgery plus electroacupuncture or only electroacupuncture. And the result of these studies show that the recovery rate was faster with electroacupuncture alone. It was up to 80%. So if, once again, if early surgery is not possible, then it's even better to use only electroacupuncture. So let's check the IVDD like for the back. So you have back pain and IVDD. So once again, your TCVM diagnosis will be like a local chi and blood stagnation, and it will be like a kidney chi deficiency. The first needle that you will apply, again, it's our permission needle. So GV20, top of the head, and by way. Then you can use some electroacupuncture because for these cases, IVDD cases, it's better if you can have the electroacupuncture. Of course, it's at the beginning, you don't have this machine. You can still use your dry needle, but then you will have to see the patient maybe on a daily basis for a few days. If you have the electroacupuncture machine, maybe you can see like twice a week or once every two weeks. So the frequency can be um, a little bit longer. Once again, you remember we use two uh, different frequency usually 10 minutes with only one frequency and then 10 more minutes with the two frequency. So the best is like to use like a different point. So you connect your, you clip your wire on different points so you can have the flow over all the body. Like for example, you can use, you can clip the left bladder 11. You remember it's the inferential for the bone. So it's more around the neck area to the right shensu, more in the hip. So by clipping these two together, the flow will go through the whole spine, the whole body. Then you can also clip in the same uh, ID, GV14. Again, you know, when you flex the neck, this is the point on the dorsal midline to by way around the hip, also on the dorsal midline. So by clipping these two together, the uh, electro, I mean, the flow will go through the whole spine. So this is like very important. And you can also clip any like uh, bladder point near the lesion to the kidney one, you remember, on the feet. So once again, you have a long flow. So bladder 11, just to remind you the location, you remember it's the influential point for the bone. Sheng Su, I think we never learned this before. 
So by the name, you know that it's like a classical point. So Shensu, it's easy to locate. And this is also a very useful point for all this IVDD or back pain because it's one cool lateral to by way. So you have by way, so just a little bit lateral, you have your couple of Shengsu. So you remember by way is between the lumbar seven and the first sacral. And this Shengsu is very useful for any IVDD, pelvic limb paresis or paralysis. And he has his friend, Sheng Peng. So Sheng Peng is one, just one kun proximal to Sheng Su. So you have Sheng Su, and then just one kun cranial to Sheng Su, you have Sheng Peng. Again, it's very useful for any IVDD, pelvic limb, paralysis, or paralysis. And you have another one, which is Sheng Jiao. Same is on the same... Uh, location, but just one kun, this time caudal to Shensu. So yeah, Shensu, by way, Shensu lateral to by way, and one kun frontal, you have Sheng Pen, and just caudal, you have Sheng Jiao. So in this picture, you can see by way in the middle, Shensu just lateral to by way, just frontal to Shensu, you have Sheng Pen, and just caudal, you have Sheng Jiao. So in this small video, you can see in this cat, I put the first needle, which is by way, then just lateral Shen Tzu. So you see, I feel with uh, one finger and then with my right hand, I put the needle. Then I'm Kodal, so I'm using, I'm putting the needle for Sheng Jiao and just frontal is Sheng Peng. So here you have like all this, uh, Sheng Pen, Shen Su, and Shen Jiao. So this is like all, you see, you have all this needle around the hip. Here you have the picture. On the top is like the head of the pet. So you can see Bai Hui in the middle, just lateral to Bai Hui, Sheng Su, just caudal Sheng Jiao, and on the, uh, on the frontal part, Sheng so all these points are very useful for IVDD and for any paralysis pets. And I guess it's quite easy to locate. So, and uh, usually it's uh, very well accepted by the pets. So it's very important point. We have also GB34, which is the inferential point for the ligament and tendon that you can use in this case. So it's located on the on the lateral side of the back leg in a depression just distal and cranial to the head of the fibula. So you remember we have a stomach 36, which is like a longitudinal point, and it's like uh, just like next to the tibial crest. It's a long point. And then you have GB34, which is just like a specific location, distal and cranial to the head of the fibula on the lateral side of the pelvic limb. And this is you, good, you can sometimes clip together with stomach 36. Kidney one is a very important point for any paralyzed pets, you have to put this one. And if you can connect the electroacupuncture machine, it's even better. So it's on the plantar surface of the pelvic limb pose underneath the central pad of the rear foot. So it's better to see on the picture. So it's an easy location and it's well tolerated because sometimes, as I say, it's very useful for the paralyzed pets. So sometimes they don't really feel this area and you have to put this one to connect to the machine. And after a few sessions, normally you have a response, like it will start feeling something like the dick pain will come again. And this will be already a huge improvement. So as I say before, the electroacupuncture treatment for this condition is very useful. So once again, we use first one frequency, so F1 at a low frequency, and this it's like a continuum wave and it will release beta endorphin. So usually this one is good for the pain. So I use this one like for five to 10 minutes, and then I want to really treat the organ, like the kidney organ. So I use the high frequency, so F2 will be higher than F1. And in this case, we have like a serotonin release. We can also use aqua acupuncture in this point. What was Jaji, bladder 40, you remember the 
youth depression on the center of the popliteal crease, liver three, large intestine four, and Liu Feng. So we have two new classical points. What were DRG? So these are very useful also for any back pain or IVDD. So they are also on the back of the animals and it's half coon medial to the inner bladder channel points. So in fact, they are very near the spine. You remember one and a half coon around the, um, the medial, um, the dorsal midnight, you have your bladder channel. So these points, they are located between the bladder channel and the uh, and the spine. So they are really near the spine and they are very useful. So you can put this point near like the, the complaint where you have your IVDD. So if it's located around lumbar two and three, then you can use this what would judge around this uh, specific location. And then we have the Liu Feng. So these are also very useful for any paralysis or paralysis pets. It's between the digit in skin fold. It's three points on each foot, okay? Here you, again, you see better on the picture. So it's really between the finger. And sometimes you can use, you can use sorry, the long needle because you really can go deep inside. And this, it's again better if you can connect to your electroacupuncture. And this, once again, for any paralyzed animal, you have to use this one. Either they still have the deep pain is conserved, or if no more deep pain, you use this one and after like maybe the three first session, you will have the deep pain again. And this will already show you that the case is improving and then you have to continue. Like it's really a good evolution. The herbal therapy, just to let you know, like usually for this IVDD, you can use the double P2 because it's designed for chi and blood stagnation. So this was more like for the backside. So if you have some IVDD more around the neck area, it's the same philosophy. You try to connect point, different points together. So like you can connect GB20 to GB21 and you can use your Jing Jiaji. Again, it's some classical point that we will just see in a minute. So Jing Jiaji, it's in fact seven pairs of acupoint on each side of the neck. Like on the picture, you can see like the left side, but on the other side, on the right, you have the same pair. So it's just above and below the lateral vertebral processes at the level of the intervertebral spaces of C1, C2, C2, C3, etc. So you see it's seven pair on the neck area. And this is very useful for any IBDD around this area or for also any cervical stiffness. And this you can, uh, either use your electroacupuncture or you can just use your dry needle or you can inject some B12. So let's see some cases now. So we have the first one is an old Labrador, is 14 years old, and he has an acute onset of back pain and a rear limb paresis. He's suffering from urinary incontinence. He has a CP deficit bilaterally and it's very painful on his back. And uh, really on this location around bladder 19, bladder 21. His tongue color is purple and his pulse is wiry. So what's the option for you? The first option for you is to send him to do like a full neurological workup, to do some MRI and to go after, uh, to take some uh, drugs like some steroid to do surgery. And then the successful rate, remember, will be around 80%. The second option is to do only acupuncture, like the owner doesn't want to do more workup, he doesn't want to pay extra money, he just wants you to treat the pets today. So you can use TCVM as a diagnostic and treatment. After three to six sessions, the successful rate will be around 90%. So you see, we are quite a good result. And the third option is to do like a full neurological exam because it's always better to have the correct Western diagnosis because you can just rule out any tumor mass because it's IVDD, you suspect IVDD, but maybe he's having a tumor in the spine. And in this case, your TCVM treatment will be different. So that's why it's always better to do the full neurological exam to really know where also you have your IVDD because then you can connect some wire just close to this location. And in this case, the successful rate will be over 95%. So 
once again, you have to explain to the owner the different option and then they know everything and they can take the decision. So in this old Labrador, our TCVM diagnosis, I mean, he went to the full uh, workup and in fact, he was IVDD, so no tumor. So then we start the treatment. So we diagnose a uh, chi deficiency, so a kidney chi deficiency with local chi and blood stagnation around bladder 1921. So we did electroacupuncture one session per week for three weeks. So we use again this pond, you think bladder 2021 because it's around the IVDD uh, location, stomach 36 connected. You remember I told you to GB 34 on the backside, kidney one on the foot connected to bladder 23. We give him the herbal medicine and we did some Trina massage. After the second visit, already he was walking like a puppy. So it was a very successful story. <laughs>
and you see like the position is really important so you really have to explain to the owner like when the leg is not on the correct position they have to correct the dog and put the feet in the correct place but you see they were committed the dog was swimming every day they help him to feel better so this was very important so he was able to walk again it took a longer time because we started one month after the surgery so this is a case i wanted to talk to show you because it's uh, show you that you really need a good communication with the surgeon because sometimes they are like separate places and they don't know either that this acupuncture service is available or they think that for one month the dog should not move and should stay like this but really you should start your acupuncture the next day from the surgery so the more sooner you start the result will be faster like we say in uh, Chinese medicine it's one day after the paralysis it's like one week of acupuncture treatment so you see like if you see the dog after one month it will take a long time so you really need to start the session as soon as possible to get a better result and the owner has to be committed because sometimes they think that they do the surgery and then the dog will walk by itself. No, you still have to do a lot of uh, exercise with the dog. And also, if you are not in a grade five, like I'm seeing, I'm treating some pets, they were in grade three, they went under surgery and now they are paralyzed. They cannot walk anymore. And the same, sometimes they come to see us, but after a long time, so of course we can still help them, but if the gap is too long, like if they come after six months, it will be like very difficult to help them. So you also have to explain that if you are in a grade less than four, it's better not to go under the surgery. With only the acupuncture, you can help them and they will not get paralyzed. So now I just want to finish this lecture with an example of acute paralysis. So this was in a younger pet. He was one year old, Ruski, and she met with a car accident. So she fractured between the thoracic 12 and 13. She went under surgery. She had a pin in this area, but still after the surgery, one week after, still not able to stand up. And she had a lack of proprioception, like almost no deep pain, but she didn't have any incontinence issue. So this is already something good because the paralysis, you are more confident that you can help the dog. The incontinence issue takes longer time. And most of the time you need some herbal therapy. So in this case, no issue with incontinence. So the first time we see uh, Husky, her tongue color was pale. The pulse was weaker at the right side. Once again, easy to get the TCVM diagnosis, a kidney chi deficiency, chi and blood stagnation. So we start electroacupuncture right away at bladder 23, kidney 1, Sheng Su, GV14 to Bai Hui. So the flow goes through the whole spine. Dry needle at stomach 36, large intestine 10, and the boiling point. We also use some herbal therapy. After only one session, she was already able to stand up. And from the second session at itself, she was able to walk. So the result was very quick. Why? Because we saw her only one week after the surgery. So not so long time. And also she was a very young animal. So you remember the results, I mean, it's easier to treat. So the results are usually better. So this was her at the beginning. So you see, she was not able to stand but she was still active, like so she still wanted to, uh, to leave. So this was after the first session, you see already able to stand up. Still the position of the leg are not completely perfect, but this was already like uh, much, much better because after the surgery, no improvement. So you can really help this patient. And this was, you see, uh, third session. And at the beginning, she had no sensation at the pole, like you pinch the skin and she was not responding. But after one session already, the deep pain was back. So this is also something that you have to explain to the owner when you have a paralyzed 
talks and with no deep sensation, you have to say at least we have to do three sessions. After the three sessions, maybe we will have the improvement, meaning like when I pinch the skin, uh, maybe I will have a response. So of course the dog will still be paralyzed, but this uh, deep pain is coming back. So it's already a huge step. And then you can go further and do three more treatment. Maybe after three more acupuncture sessions, the dog will be able to stand up for a few seconds. After three more treatment, maybe we'll be able to start walking. So you see, it's really like a progression and you really need like at least three sessions to see like if really after three acupuncture sessions, you have no improvement at all. Like the sensation is still not there or the dog is not able to keep the standing position. Maybe you have to explain to the owner that unfortunately you are not sure that you can help the dog, but it's really important to at least try this three session. And most of the time you have something that it's progressing. So you have to look for, because of course, sometimes you are very lucky. It's from nothing to a walk again after a few sessions, but sometimes it takes more time, but you have this uh, evolution which show you that it's responding and you have to continue because it will be a pity to stop. So TCVM offers a less invasive alternative to surgery. And you see that the results are most of the time the same level than the surgery. And sometimes it's even higher result with only acupuncture. It's uh, okay to combine with the best Western medicine. It's okay to combine with surgery if you are in grade five and if you do the surgery quite fast. But again, keep in mind that for the grade four, grade three, sometimes don't rush to go under the surgery and sometimes acupuncture only will have better results. So it's really an important tool to help all your IVDD patients. And now I want to finish all this webinar with a special uh, lecture about cats. I think that a common mistake is like to uh, think that cats are not a good candidate for acupuncture. Like some people, they are not so confident with cats and uh, they are more scared like to do acupuncture for them. But I think that they are really, really good candidate. And sometimes they react even better or faster than the dogs. So you really have to use also acupuncture for cats and don't be scared to use this for them because it's also very useful for a lot of cat condition. So we will have some example about when you can use this acupuncture for cats. And the first one, the first uh, um, disease or condition is like the respiratory disorder. It's something like quite familiar for cats, you know, with the chronic cough, you can really like, it can be like uh, hard to treat with the basic medicine like you can, but this is the patient that will always take antibiotics. And once again, sometimes the owner is fed up to give this medicine, or you can have some side effect of this medicine and acupuncture can really help them. So if you have one point that you should know about uh, respiratory disorder, it's one classical point is Ding Shuan. This one really, it's the point that can stop the cough. Then of course, if you want to go further, you have to add more points. So for the chronic cough condition, obviously you can use this Ding Shuan that we will see the location in a minute. Then you can use bladder 13, the back shoe point for the lung, bladder 14, 15, CV 22, CV 17 for Qi, PC 6, lung 7 and 9, stomach 36 and large intestine 4. So Ding Shuan is a classical point. So it's easy to locate because it's half cool lateral to GV14. You remember GV14, a tip to find this point is like you flex the neck and this is the huge depression on the dorsal midline. So GV14, uh, Ding Shuan, sorry, is just half cool lateral to GV14. It's a very useful point for cough and asthma. So if you have a cat's owner and the cat suffering from asthma attack, you can also advise the owner to like massage this area when he's having an attack. So the cat can feel better and can stop coughing. 
Bladder 13, it's the bacchial point for the lung. So uh, once again, it's on the bladder meridian, one and a half cone lateral to the caudal border of the dorsal spinous process of the third thoracic vertebra. Lung 7 and lung 9, they are also very important points for all this cough. So lung 7, the, so both of them, they are like a transpositional points so on the lung channel. Lung 7 is proximal to the styloid process of the radius. It's the master point for the head and neck. And you have lung 9, it's the medial aspect of the radiocarpal joint, and it's the mother point. And you remember, if you have a deficiency pattern, you have to tonify the mother. So these two points, they are near to each other, and they are located on the medial face of the front leg. So this is just a tip to find this one. You can bend the carpus, and you can put your two fingers like that. It's like a duck, like the, the mouth of a duck. And then when you flex, you can just put your two fingers here, and then you have your location on lung seven and lung nine. So this is just to help you to find this uh, location. Then for feline asthma, it's almost the same thing. It's an inflammation of the airways with bronchoconstriction. The factors for this asthma can be a seasonal allergen, the stress, the infections, the parasites. So it's quite huge, nothing like in particular. So in Chinese medicine, it's more like the wind cold, the wind heat. So it's an invasion of wind. And this is more like an excess, so the beginning of the asthma. And then it's chronic, and then it's more like a deficiency. So it's more like a lung or a kidney deficiency in TCVM aspect. So let's just see this with a case. So if we have a 10 years old spayed female cat, she is having some asthma symptoms and she is tired. Pearls are deep, are weak, and weaker on the right side, and the tongue color is pale. So she has a typical lung chi deficiency, okay, because she's tired, she's an old animal, and she is having a chronic disease. So, which point can we use for her? We can use lung seven and lung nine that we just learned, just to tonify the lung chi and stop the asthma. We can use CV22 and Ding Shuan to stop the cough, to stop the asthma attack. We can use bladder 13 and by way to tonify the lung chi. Then, of course, we can use our couple stomach 36 and large intestine 10 to tonify the chi. We use a dry needle because this cat was not very happy with the electroacupuncture. So no worries. We can just use the dry needle and we just see her maybe more often. And we also advise the owner to do like some massage at Ding Shuan when she was having a crisis. We gave her some herbal medicine. Bufesan is a formula for the lung chi deficiency. We also advise some food therapy. So we advise some warm food to nourish and tonify the spleen and the lung chi. So we uh, ask her to feed the cat with lamb, chicken, some pumpkin, but she has to avoid clam and duck and yogurt. And uh, we did this session like uh, once a week for a month, and then she was much better. And we used to see her on a maintenance session every three months. And she's not taking any more corticoid. Then another condition for cats, very useful, because you have a lot of cats suffering from megacolon and constipation. And this is like a main issue. Sometimes they have to go under surgery and many times. So this is really something that it's really helpful with acupuncture. I have almost until now, I touch wood 100% success with this megacolon. So in TCVM medicine, it's related to the spleen. And usually we have either a chi deficiency, like the intestine, the function, it's not moving enough. So it's deficiency of the chi. Or sometimes it's more like a yin deficiency, like there is not enough fluid and the stool are too dry and then it's not going down. So what we have to do, we have to use acupuncture to move the intestine, reduce the pain, because most of the time it's painful for the cat, and stimulate the appetite. So for this, again, we will see a full case. So this is a 10 years old dog. Her name is Nana. She was one of my first case. She's paid, she's vaccinated, she, it's an indoor cat, but she's a little bit, it's like a small cat because she's only two and a half kilo, but she's 10 years old. It's a domestic short hair. 
So the owner main complaint, it's the constipation and the anorexia. She had a long history of constipation, but recently it got worse and she didn't pass any stool since one week. So today she's weak, she's dehydrated, and now she's not eating anymore and since two days already. So the day you saw her, she, she was like very weak, very tired. She didn't have any fever. She had an infection colon. We did some enema without any success and she already have a lot of treatment from other clinics, but no success. On the x-ray, we see many fecal eggs and we see also that she was suffering from a scoliosis. So from our TCVM examination, we find that she was a shy cat, so her constitution was water, and uh, she was on dry food only. She vomited two days ago. She was dehydrated, like around grade two to three. She didn't have any temperature preference. A coat was still shiny, no dandruff. She was suffering so from this scoliosis, so we asked some information from the owner. So she told her that she fell down when she was a kitten, and uh, she was also like a smaller cat than the other one. Her tongue today is pale and wet, and her purse is weak, deep, and stronger at the left side. And uh, when we check all our bladder points, we discover like a sensitivity around bladder 20. So it's quite easy. She is a typical spleen chi deficiency, and we can add also the kidney chi deficiency because of this spine issue. But today we treat our main complaint because nowadays she is not having stool since one week. She's dehydrated, and if she is not having stool within one day, she will have to go under surgery to remove all this stool. So what point should we use for her? Permission point by we. Local point GV1, you remember, very useful for diarrhea or constipation. Stomach 35, 25, sorry. And distal point, stomach 37, stomach 39, kidney 3, spleen 3, GV14, Schengen for the appetite. So stomach 25, it's on the dorsal, on the, sorry, on the ventral side. So it's too cool lateral to the center of the umbilicus, in the center of the rectus abdominis muscle. So you just find your umbilicus and it's just lateral in the muscle. Okay, and this is a very useful point also for constipation. Either you put the needle, so what I usually do is I put all my needle, I do my acupuncture session for 20 minutes. At the end, I put, if the cat agree, I put him on the backside and then I can put this needle for five, 10 minutes. Otherwise, if you cannot apply the needle, you can still do like some massage or just show to the owner how to massage this area around the umbilical. So the TCVM treatment, so just to understand why we use this point for this cat. So we use the energetic point. We have to tonify the chi. So we use stomach 36, large intestine 10 in the front side, CV4, CV6, stomach 25. Then we use our back shoe and front move points. So bladder 20, 21, because it's related to the spleen organ. Bladder 26, stomach 25, CV 12, CV 4, and stomach, sorry, 25 again. We use some dry needle and electroacupuncture, 20 hertz for 10 minutes. Then you remember 80 to 120 hertz for 10 more minutes. We use some aqua at uh, GV1 at the first session. At the beginning, we did a daily treatment because as I say, it was like an emergency. If she was not having stool, she has to go under surgery. So we did three treatments once a day for three days. After that, we will see that she had stool, she was feeling better. Then we used to see her uh, once a week. Then progressively, we do once a week, once every two weeks, okay? And we, the thing we say before, we ask the owner to do some massage around stomach 25. So the first session, she was not very happy. Like uh, she bites everyone at the clinic. So we were able to put only by way stomach 25, Schengen still, and bladder 2021, 20, but no electroacupuncture. She was not happy at all with the needles. I guess she was also feeling weak. She was feeling very painful with all this tool. 
So it may explain why also she was not very happy. The second day, she had some stools, so she, we were very happy. And maybe she was already feeling better because she would start to eat again. And on that second session, we were able to use electroacupuncture. And this cat was amazing because the first session, she bites everyone. And at the end, this is the cat that was able to stay alone. And this was in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, in the um, clinic, it was like an open space area. So you have dogs, cats, very noisy, but still she was in the middle of all these other dogs and cats. And she was feeling like very safe and she was staying with electroacupuncture and she was very happy. So you, you really see like the first day she was like a tiger and then she was really accepting needles very well. So second session already she had some stool, then she becomes stronger. So the owner still have to do some enema because she used to do it every day. And at that time, the first day we saw her, she had enema every day, but no stool, you remember, since one week. So after one week, she was having stool every three to four days. And uh, after a while, stool every alternate day, but the owner didn't have to use any more enema. And the dog was really feeling, uh, the cat, sorry, was really feeling better. The tongue color was pink. So you see the difference at the beginning, she was very pale. So a lot of chi deficiency. So you can check the tongue color. It was becoming better, more pink. She had uh, bowel movement almost every day. She was more active. So, and you see, this is the, the cat that we continue to do a session once a month and she was sleeping during the session. So this is her. You see, and this sometimes it was difficult even for us to believe that the first day, like she was like really like a tiger, even if she was weak, she was really not happy with the session. And then after only like three sessions, she was already like by herself on the pillow and she was accepting the needle very well. This uh, video, we saw it already when we learned about the TCVM consultation. So this was her, this was Nana. So you see, this was maybe the second or third uh, session. So she was already doing very well. So always huh, with your left hand, I'm checking the location, the exact location. And then with the right hand, I put the needle in and then I just clip the wire. And she was like, uh, relaxed. So. This uh, acupuncture for megacolon is really, really useful. After her, I had many cases in Vietnam. There are lots of cats with constipation issue. I saw some cases that they had like sometimes five, six times surgery to remove the feces. And before to go under surgery again, I say stop, let's start acupuncture. And they never had surgery again. So this is really useful, even without any herbal formula, just the acupuncture and if we have the electro machine, it's better. But at the beginning, obviously, if it's like an emergency, they really didn't have any tool for a while. You have to see them maybe on a daily basis for a while. But it's really useful. Now another cat issue can be like the urine spraying. So in Chinese medicine, this is more like an issue, the disturbance of the shun. And uh, it's a disharmony between the kidney and the heart. Remember, the shun is related to the heart. So we have to use some uh, points to tonify the yang in the heart. So it will be bladder 17, PC6, heart 7. You remember our lucky point and kidney 3. We need to control the body fluid. We remember bladder 22 and bladder 39. These two are points very useful for that. Then we want to tonify the blood in the heart. So bladder 25, heart 7, spleen 6, stomach 36. And we need to calm the shen. Han shen, da feng men, PC6, heart 7. We can always advise to nourish, uh, to give some food to nourish the blood and the yin. So if they have to choose, better to feed the cat some duck, turkey, carrot, pork, tofu, and eggs. So let's see this case, seven years old cat. She has some issue. She urine spraying related to stress. The owner, when the owner was not at home, she was peeing everywhere. And recently they have a new puppy and the cat is peeing even more. 
So it was a very stressed cat, but tongue color was pale but dry and the body was feeling hot. So a TCVM diagnose was like a hot heart yin deficiency plus a shun disturbance. So what we did for her, we did acupuncture session once every two weeks for two months. So we used dry needle at GB20, Dafengman, PC6, Heart7 to calm the shun. And we also used electroacupuncture at bladder 23 and bladder 15, back shoe point for the kidney, being it's also related to kidney and bladder 15 for the heart. And we combined with herbal formula, shun calmer, once again to calm the shun. She was better, like during the, I mean, after the session for one week, she was not peeing anymore, but uh, we still have to continue the maintenance session and she has to stay on the herbal formula. We tried to stop the herbal formula. Then after a while, she was peeing again. So you see these cases are not easy, but with the Western medicine, it's very hard to treat this case. But with the Chinese medicine and the acupuncture, you can control, but usually they need like a lot of maintenance session. And sometimes if you stop the acupuncture, then the issue sometimes can come again. But still, the owner was very happy because with the session, the cat was not peeing anymore. Let's finish with a final case. So this is Tina. She's a 14 years old cat spayed female, and she's suffering from chronic feline coriza and she always need to take antibiotics. And she also have a suspicion of frontal lymphoma near the ear. So she didn't go under like a scan or so we are not really sure about that, but a vet suspect this lymphoma. So she's sneezing and coughing a lot. Her appetite is not very good. She's taking antibiotics and corticosteroid all the time. So she's tired. She didn't have any temperature preference, but we can feel the mass near the ear. A tongue color was pale, a pulse was weak. So our TCVN pattern was a lung chi deficiency plus a spleen chi deficiency because of her low appetite. We use this dry needle, GB20, bladder 20, stomach 36, large intestine 10, ding Shuan, lung seven and lung nine, and large intestine 20, that we will see in a minute. Electroacupuncture also, she was accepting very nicely. So GV14 to by way, bladder 13, bladder 21 for the appetite issue. We start some wet chi booster. This was more for the mass. And we used to do a session every two weeks. She was feeling already better, more appetite, less sneezing, and she didn't take any antibiotics. Then we had, because she was stronger, we had some max formula for the lymphoma issue. And we are seeing her every month since one year. And she took only one time antibiotics, Toxival for the sneezing issue. And the size of the lymphoma decreased a little bit. So at least no increasing in this mass and the cat is feeling stronger and she is eating well and uh, she almost never take antibiotics anymore. So this large intestine 20 that we use for her, it's in the nasal labial groove on the lateral aspect of the nose at the level of the widest part of the nostril. And this point is very useful for nasal discharge. So here it's the location on the cat. It's where the largest part of the nose and it's really useful if you have a lot of sneezing and the loss of nasal discharge. So this is her. So I don't know if you can hear, we can see the music. So this is the, when the um, electroacupuncture, the time is over, we have like this music. And usually the pets, after a while, they know, they know this and they know that it's the end. So to sum up, this can be very useful to avoid the surgery for the cats. Very important to do the maintenance session and also no give up. You really have to try a second time with the cats because sometimes the first session they will not be happy but you will see the evolution at the second time and sometimes also if they don't uh, if they are not very happy with the needles you have to use your flying technique method not at the beginning but when you are more confident and you know the location of your point you can just put your needle quickly and then you can put the cat back in his uh, cage in his transportation cage and that he will 
low and you will keep the needle. I never see a cat that like remove the needle. When the needle are in, usually they will sleep and they will wait nicely for 20 minutes. So don't uh, avoid cats for acupuncture. This, they are very good candidate for that. So thank you very much. So I hope that you enjoy like this uh, three webinar and I know it's a lot of information, but really you have to start practicing. And once again, if you need like some more information, you always have like that WhatsApp group or my email address and you can uh, contact me if needed. So thanks a lot and uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Thank you. Thank you.